Hello foodies, welcome to Sharmila's kitchen. What happened is today I'm not on cooking mode. So I called up my dear friend Karen and asked her to make something special for us. Before beginning, let me introduce Karen. She is an amazing cook currently living in Toronto. She participated in couple of cooking shows and have a nice cooking channel called Craving's Blog where she shares world class recipes. Me and Karen never met but we know each other till I joined Testmate and now we are very close to heart. So I am looking forward to see what is Karen making for us and I hope you guys are also excited to see. So let's begin. Thank you so much Sharmila for inviting me to your channel to showcase my roast chicken. Hi everyone, I'm Karen Ahmed and on Cravings Food Adventures, we take you on a journey around the globe without leaving my kitchen in Toronto, Canada. We are globally connected and we're so lucky to be able to get ingredients from all over the world. Today I'm going to show you a very simple roast chicken. This is crispy and juicy and I'm here to tell you that this murgi is no dal barabar. So please subscribe to my channel and enjoy many delicious recipes to come. I have a roasting chicken here. This simply means that the bird is about 3 to 4 pounds and is about 2 to 3 months old. This is the best kind of chicken for a roast as the meat is really really succulent. Before I go any further, I'm going to simply take the wishbone off. This is done really easily by scraping at the bone and then you can just put your fingers in and pull that wishbone right out. This makes carving the bird really easy to do later on. If your bird comes stuffed with liver and other spare parts, be sure to remove this right now. Just like I prepare my turkey, I'm going to do the exact same thing for my roasting chickens. I'm going to prepare a really simple brine. I've got a quarter cup of sugar, a quarter cup of salt, I'm going to add a teaspoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of turmeric or haldi powder. Now this is actually going to be a lovely antibacterial agent in this brine. I'm also going to add some black pepper and then I'm going to mix it all together with two liters of water. I'm going to immerse my bird in this beautiful bath and then I'm also going to add a couple of slices of lemon. Now typically I will brine my bird overnight but you must leave it in the brine for at least one to two hours. I'm going to immerse my bird breast side down because that is the driest part of the chicken and that will need the brine the longest. When the chicken has spent enough time in the brine, I'm going to drain it and make sure all the water drips out of the cavity. Reserve the lemons that you put in the brine. I'm going to use that later as a stuffing. And then I'm going to pat my chicken dry really well using paper towels. You want to make sure that your chicken isn't damp at all. If it's damp, it's going to turn into steam in the oven and it's simply going to steam your chicken and not roast it. One other thing that you really need to pay attention to is to make sure that your chicken is at room temperature. Once it's out of the brine, have it sitting on your countertop for one to two hours till your chicken comes to room temperature. If you put a cold chicken in the oven, it's going to seize up and it's going to turn really, really tough. If you have enough time, you can leave your chicken to air dry in the refrigerator. While my bird is coming to room temperature, I'm going to work on the spice butter. I've got a couple of tablespoons of salted butter that has come to room temperature and I'm going to add a teaspoon of red chili powder, one teaspoon of roasted cumin powder. I'm also going to add some crushed black pepper and I'm just going to mix this together really well. I'm going to take a tablespoon of this and leave it aside. I'm also going to add some coriander that I've cut really fine, about a teaspoon of that and about two teaspoons of roasted garlic that I've crushed. Now, I'm using my spiced garlic recipe. I will leave a link to that at the end of this video and also in the description. My bird is now at room temperature and I'm ready to spice it. I'm gonna put my fingers underneath the skin and I'm going to try and free it away from the flesh of the bird. I'm going to take my spice butter that has the coriander and the garlic in it and I'm going to push it in as far as I can go all over the bird on the underside of the skin. 
I'm going to place the lemon slices that I reserved from the brine into the cavity of the bird as well as a little bit of coriander. Now this is going to create that beautiful center of flavor that's going to go right through the bird. I'm not going to bother trussing the bird. I don't think it's really necessary. But what I am going to do is I'm going to tie the legs together so when I take it out of the oven, it makes for a beautiful presentation. Then I'm going to take the reserved butter that doesn't have the coriander and garlic and I'm going to smear the outside of the bird. I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees, but before I put it into the oven, what I like to do is take my bird and put it back side down, that is the breast side facing up on a really, really hot skillet with some oil in it. Now this is an optional step. If you prefer, you can take your bird and put it in the oven breast side up straight away. Once I've got a really good sear on the bird, I'm ready to put it in my pre-oiled roasting pan. My oven is already heated at 350 degrees. I'm going to put my bird on my roasting pan and into the oven and I'm going to leave it there for 20 minutes. Now the reason I've put my bird in by itself in the roasting pan is I want to make sure there's nothing else on that pan that's going to create any kind of steam. My bird needs at least 20 minutes to get nice and crisp. While my chicken is in the oven for the initial 20 minutes, I'm going to work on the rest of the ingredients. I've got a beautiful red onion that I'm going to cut into slices as well as four potatoes that I've quartered. Who heard of a roast chicken without potatoes? I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I already have a pan out that I seared my chicken in and I'm going to sear the potatoes as well. It's also going to pick up all those delicious flavors from the spiced butter. Once that's done, I'm just going to keep it aside. After the 20 minute mark, once I take my chicken out of the oven, I'm going to add a layer of the onions as well as the potatoes and I'm going to return it to the oven for another 20 to 30 minutes till your chicken has a beautiful golden brown hue. At this point, I'm going to tent it with some foil and then I'm going to let it sit for at least 15 minutes before I cut into it and it's ready to serve. So thank you so much for joining me on Cravings Food Adventures. I do hope to see you soon. Please do take care, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you and see you soon. Until then, take care. Bye. For Karen, it was a wonderful recipe. I wish I could join there and enjoy the chicken together. But it's fine. I'll try the recipe here and give you the feedback. And thank you so much to share this wonderful recipe. So guys, you must try this recipe. It's fabulous. Once you try, don't forget to comment, share and subscribe to my channel as well as Karen's channel, Cravings Blog. See you soon with more exciting recipes. Till then, take care.